so welcome back guys my name is Wes and today I'm out here at the beehives and I have got my jumper cables and a pouch of oxalic acid and it is time to get the bees ready for the winter time there's one more thing I need and that's a battery and I feel like I need to apologize to y'all because my camera is going to be in some weird places and kind of awkward places I'm afraid because I had a accident with the tripod and lost about a foot off of the bottom so I can't get it up to where I need it so sorry about the weird camera angles today well guys I usually enjoy getting up close and personal with the hives so that y'all can see the bees coming and going while I talk to the camera but unfortunately they're just not letting me do that right now we've got some weather moving in so I think maybe they're on edge because of the weather that's about to be changing so I'm gonna stay a few feet away from the hives and hope not to get stung too much today uh, so here's what we need to do we need to dive into these hives and kind of see what's going on inside of them but my main goal for today is to begin the process process of varroa mite treatment so there are two main seasons for beekeeping there's fall and there's spring and it's not that winter and summer don't matter it's just that fall and spring seem to kind of be the most consequential seasons and everybody talks about spring being a really great season because that's when all the nectar comes in and most definitely I would agree that's an exciting season for bees because man I just love that good spring honey but fall is incredibly important because most of your spring success depends on the health of your hives in the fall because the bees that are being hatched out right now a lot of those are going to start going through or going to be the ones that carry the hives through the through the winter and you want to make sure those bees are healthy going into the winter time so what I want to do today is begin the process of treating for mites in these beehives. And we're going to be using a substance called oxalic acid. I have used several different uh, treatment options over the years and I think it was a couple of years ago I switched to oxalic acid and have found it to be extremely effective. Now there are two ways to do oxalic acid. There is the vaporizer method which is what we're going to be using. This is a vaporizer right here. I'll show you how it works here in just a minute. And there's the dribble method. Now the dribble method has got to be done in the winter time when the brood is in cluster. Basically, <clears throat> excuse me, you mix up a solution of oxalic acid, water, and I think there's some sugar in there too, I'm not sure. And you dribble it over the cluster or spray it from a, a like a garden sprayer and that kills the mites. So the best way to do it is the dribble method because that kills all of the mites on the bees and in the winter time there's not a lot of bees inside of the cells growing. There's not a lot of baby bees capped off into the cells. The vaporizer method is actually the least effective method because it does not kill the mites that are in the cells. Therefore what I will have to do vaporize today, vaporize five days from now, vaporize five days from then, and then just as a fail safe vaporize again probably for a fourth time five days from then. So lots of vaporization going on here. This is the way that I've been doing it for a couple of years now and I have found it to be extremely extremely effective. This stuff kills the snot out of some mites. So let me show you how it works and then we'll get started. Before we get started here, let's check out some of the tools we're gonna to be using. Of course, the jumper cables are pretty self-explanatory, but this is the vaporizer right here. And this is kind of an interesting little tool and it's extremely simple. It's basically just a milled out aluminum pan, I guess you could say, right here. That's where the oxalic acid goes and it's black, of course, because I've used it quite a few times. It's another little aluminum block here that holds this and that is a glow plug out of a diesel engine of course the rest of this is just a pan that holds it all together and then of course you've got this wire that comes up here and you've got your positive got your negative you hook these up to your jumper cables from your battery pan gets hot and vaporizes the acid and then of course you've got the oxalic acid itself now oxalic acid you can also find other under another name I'm struggling today under another name and that is wood bleach now wood bleach is exactly the same thing and by reading these labels you can actually see that the purity of this stuff is actually a little higher than this stuff however this is not legal to use in the hives and this is because this is actually labeled for it now this works it works extremely well 
but this is what's legal so this is what we're going to be using today we're also going to be using some pieces of metal flashing to block off the screened bottom boards on the hives and we're going to be using some t-shirts to plug up the entrances and of course we'll use the smoker to help keep the bees calm now i realize i have not talked about exactly what varroa mites are in the first place and why they need to be killed let's look into the hives first and see if we can find some and i'll show you what they look like and then we'll i'll try to explain what they are what they do and why they don't need to be there I went ahead and skipped down to one of the lower boxes in this hive. I want to go ahead and just kind of skip to the brood so we can find a mite or two. Ooh, sorry, buddy. And uh, just kind of check out what's going on. So we need to skip down to the brood in order to uh, have a better chance of doing that. So uh, let me see if I can get a better shot of this. But uh, this is an excellent, excellent looking frame right here. And it doesn't look like anything's going on, but down in those cells, there is tons and tons of brood down in there. Let me see if I can get a better shot for you. All of that white stuff down in there and the little worms. The white stuff is the royal jelly. Those worms are the larva. Really nice looking frame right here. Very nice population in this hive as well. I don't see any obvious issues. I don't see any obvious signs of disease either, which is great. Now this is the frame where we would expect to find some mites and I will, I will show you what I'm talking about here. Now we could spend a whole bunch of time and we could look through these bees and eventually find a mite or two, I'm sure, but our best bet is gonna be up under this capped brood. Now, there are a couple different types of brood right here. If you look over here, that's a worker brood. It's got the very flat, capped cells right there but over here is the drone brood and up under these right here we're going to find male honeybees and the male honeybees are the um, are the cells in which the varroa mites prefer to reproduce because these drones actually stay in the cells 26 days these stay like 21 days if i remember correctly and there's more time for the varroa mites to reproduce inside of these cells because they're capped longer and the varroa mites do their reproducing inside of these cells so let's dig him out and see if we can find a mite on him this is a job for tweezers and i never ever remember to bring tweezers with me Oops. Here's our drone brood here, uh, minus the head, unfortunately, and I do not see any mites on him at all, which is, uh, which is good for the hive. Not good for the video, but good for the hive. Let's keep digging. All right, guys, here's what I'm looking for here, and we've got a double, basically a double whammy right here. So if you look very closely, you can see a little bug crawling around on this bee right here. It's right there on the head right now. Did you see it? It just, it's hard for me to tell what y'all can see. Oh, there it is. There it is, there it is, there it is. All right, so this is a perfect example of why these things need to go. So this particular uh, drone brood right here has got a mite on it and if you see if you look at it very closely this is actually a very late stage drone brood probably probably is only if I would have had to guess I'd say two or three days maybe four days from hatching and if you can look closely you can see that there's no wings this is a disease called deformed wing virus and the varroa mites spread that disease and that can be very detrimental to a bee colony so here we've got a varroa mite and exactly the reason why you don't want varroa mites in your hives well guys i'm going through the rest of these boxes to inspect things before i do my vaporization and i wanted to i wanted to share this with y'all this is a frame of goldenrod honey that the bees are putting up it's fall goldenrod is in full bloom right now and there's a lot of it this year in my area which is great and this stuff is a very important food source for the bees over the winter time and uh, goldenrod honey despite its very beautiful name has a very terrible flavor and if you can see that gouge i took out of that right there uh, it tastes really bad and if you if you come up to your hives and i can actually smell it right now if you come up to your hives during the fall you can actually get the aroma of the goldenrod and you smell of it and you think oh man something's wrong with my hives this smells terrible 
it's just the goldenrod honey. Now I'm thankful that they put it up uh, and I guess I should probably be happy that I can't take it and eat it because I would probably take it and leave the bees nothing over the winter time. So tastes pretty bad. We're going to let them have it. Well guys at this point I've gone through all of the hives and they're all in really good shape except for one. One of them is queenless. I'm not really sure why but I'll have to deal with that really soon. Uh, at this point I want to go ahead and do my mite treatments. Now I'm probably going to get some comments about this. Uh, usually what you should do is do uh, figure out what your mite load is on the hives and you could go through the hives and do an alcohol wash on a sample of bees, a sugar shake on a sample of bees, or you could pull out a sample of drone brood and count the mites on a certain number of drone brood to see what your overall mite load in the hives are. And there's kind of a treatment threshold and below that threshold you don't really necessarily need to treat your hives. Now oxalic acid, there's really not a danger of these bees becoming immune to it. This stuff's been used for decades in Europe. It's been used for a few years here and I don't think there's any uh, resistance being built up to this stuff because it's kind of a mechanical, it, it kills them by non-chemical means and I'll explain that here in a minute but uh, we're not going to do that because I'm going to treat them all anyway so first of all we need some safety gear the label says that you basically need to dress up in a hazmat suit I really need a respirator but I don't know where mine is or even if I have it anymore so I'm going to use an N95 and I'm going to use my spo smoker to make sure that I stay upwind of this stuff so again I'm going to use my smoker to make sure I know which way the wind is blowing so I can stay away from this vapor so this is what I'm going to use to kind of demonstrate this is the wood bleach but then we'll swap to this stuff to do the actual treatment so I want to give you uh, show you what this stuff looks like if you see that it is kind of a crystallized powdery type substance and basically what will happen is this stuff will vaporize and it'll get all through the hive the bees will flap it around the hive with their wings and blow it all over the place and basically there will be microscopic little crystals that get embedded into the pads on the mites feet and it destroys those pads makes the pads unable to stick to bees and the mites fall off of the bees um, and they can't do what they do which is spread disease inside of the hive so it works by mechanical means instead of chemical means I read one time that it's kind of like getting hit with a hammer and it's tough to become immune to getting hit with a hammer so uh, let's demonstrate this real quick and we'll do the we'll do the vaporization now there's a certain amount that the package is going to tell you to put in each hive uh, for the demonstration here I'm just going to put a little bit in this vaporizer to show you what it does All right, we'll hook up one end to our battery here our other end to the vaporizer If we can get it to stay. There we go. Well, that pretty well sums it up it gets very very hot the water and the crystals kind of separate from each other and it vaporizes and these you see that powder right there that very uh, sharp looking crystallized uh, almost like a puff ball almost that right there uh, I believe that is the stuff that messes up the mites and it does a very good job it's extremely effective on mites let's do it for real now the first thing that we have to do is block off the lower entrance to the hive and also block off the uh, screen bottom boards and the reason for that is if we don't most of that oxalic acid is going to dump out the bottom and it's going to be wasted I like to use t-shirts to block off this lower entrance here and if you've got another entrance you can block it off with grass. 
Then we'll just take our vaporizer, put it right on top of our piece of flashing, and hook it up to our battery. Now I like to take the vaporizer at least a couple of times during this process and move it around because it gets extremely hot and it actually can catch the hive on fire under the right circumstances. And I hope that y'all can see this. You see the vapor coming out? Now at this point, I'll go back to the very first hive. I like to leave, uh, leave the hive plugged up for five or 10 minutes or so. So we'll go back to this hive and let them go. Well guys, I think y'all pretty well get the point. I went through all of those hives and I did the treatment on the hives and now I'll have to wait a few days and do it again. And the reason that I have to do that is because I mentioned earlier in the video that vapor doesn't get into the capped cells into the brood. It gets only the mites that are on the bees that are walking around in the hive, what you would call the phoretic mites. And what I'll have to do is wait a few days until those bees come out of those cells and expose those mites. Then I'll be able to vaporize again and do that again and get those mites as well and repeat that process until they're all dead. Uh, this is this has really become my preferred method for treating mites on bees and the reason for that there's two main reasons for that uh, the first reason is because it, it I've had very healthy beehives since I started this I mean really really healthy hives I when I was using formic acid when I was using um, very early in my beekeeping like the first year or two years I used a chemical treatment got good results with that but I didn't like using the chemical treatment but this oxalic has made very very healthy hives the second reason is it makes it to where i can interchange all of my my frames if i was using chemical treatments i wouldn't be able to take a a frame that had been in the hive when a chemical treatment occurred and take that frame and put it into a honey super if necessary or take it away and extract it if i wanted to extract it because there would be chemicals in that honey there's chemicals in that wax and I don't, I just don't want to have to deal with that hassle. I don't want to have to take the honey supers off of the hives to do my treatments, then put them back on. Uh, and it's not because I'm some kind of an organic junkie because I'm really not. It just makes things easier. If you notice back here, I'm running all medium boxes and that's because I like to make sure everything's interchangeable. I can move frames anywhere I want to move them. I can extract from anywhere I want to extract. And if I started using chemical treatments, that would limit my options there. So that's one of my main reasons for uh, enjoying oxalic acid so much. It's a little fiddly, it takes a little while to do, but uh, in the end to me it seems to be very much worth it. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all on the next one. One more thing that I forgot to mention, if you want to do this to your hives, uh, it, at the very least make sure you do have a decent respirator. Uh, the N95 really didn't work that great and the uh, best bet is to stay upwind of this junk and wear really the respirator that they tell you to wear. And the reason for that is not because I'm a big safety Sally because I'm not that either. It, it's really nasty stuff. I've Other times I've been out here doing this and I've gotten a whiff of it and it'll almost knock you down. It is nasty, nasty stuff. I mean, it's microscopic crystals. It can't be good for your lungs, right? So um, word to the wise, get the right equipment if you wanna do this. That's gonna do it. I'll see y'all on the next one.